How you doing everybody? Nick DiVirgilio here and today's video is on the Kelly Shoe Kick Drum Microphone Shock Mount Systems. All right drummers, let's face it, drums can be a big pain. You gotta take all of this gear in and out of your homes, your apartments, in and out of clubs, studios, churches, up and down flights of stairs. You know, it's a lot of gear. But there are some accessories out there suited just for us, the drummers, to make our lives a little bit more convenient and consistent. If you're a band touring around the country in a van and you have to lug your gear in and out of clubs every night, one thing you know that could be hard for drummers is getting a consistent sound on your drums and microphone placement. Well, these Kelly Shoe drum mounting systems give you consistent microphone placement every time. They stay in your kick drums, never move, and uh, are really easy to install. So let's get to it right now. Kelly Shoe makes two different kinds of shock mount systems, and I have two beautiful Mapex Saturn V Pro kick drums here to show how these work. Right over here, this one's the Pro, and this mounts pretty much any kick drum microphone on the market. I have a D112 right here, a very common kick drum microphone, uh, Shure Beta 52s, anything like that will work with the Pro. And it mounts on the inside or the outside of the kick drum. Check that out, that's really cool. And this one over here is called the Flats, and this works with flat microphones like Shure's Beta 91, which is very common for kick drums, or Sennheiser's E901. We're gonna start with the Pro mount first, so let's see what's inside the box. There's not that much, actually. You have your instructions. And these are the different pieces you use to make the cords that hold the mounting system inside the drum. I'll show you those in just one second. Down here at the bottom of the box is the actual mount. A little protective cover right there, and that's what it looks like when you take out. Simple horseshoe setup here. All right, let's get the drum up here and show you how this works. One thing I want to state, very emphatically and very important thing to say, you need to install this on the spurs side of the kick drum, okay? Not the beater side, the resonance side. Make sure you do that so you don't have to do it twice if you put this thing together incorrectly the first time. Remember, the spurs side. So that is the front of the kick drum here pointing to you at the camera. And start taking out some of these pieces. First thing you need to do, it has a bunch of these leather straps. You connect these leather straps to the lug screws on the inside of the drum. I'm gonna show you how to do one, and the rest are exactly the same. So you fold them in half like that. Okay, first we're gonna take off one of the lug screws. You do not need to start with the screws at the very bottom of the drum. Go up one lug, and we'll start there. And you're gonna do this exact same thing on either side of the drum. Let's start over here. Now, if you have lugs like this one on the Mapex drum, make sure you hold onto the lug as you're unscrewing it so it doesn't fall on the ground. But again, just one screw, it's really simple. There you go. Take your leather strap and you're gonna put the screw through the leather strap holes. Now, the, the holes are, it's gonna be a tight fit, okay? So you have to kind of squeeze it through, but that's good, you want it to be tight so it doesn't break. So just squeeze it down and put it all the way down to the bottom, then fold it in half and do the same thing. Again, it might be a little tight at first, but just, just, you'll get it with a little bit of elbow grease, as they say. There we go. Push all the way down. Now you have a little bit of a hook. Now all you do is reconnect your lug. So let me get it in the hole on this side. Make sure it's all set. There you go. Screw it back in. There you go. Now do the same thing for as many of the lug screws as you need to. One thing I wanna mention, I'm gonna set this up in the traditional way where it's just like this, the horseshoe is straight up in the kick drum. But this thing could be mounted any which way to accommodate all kinds of different microphones. So you can have it upside down, you can have it like this flat at an angle. I've seen all kinds of different ways you could set this up. They give you enough cords and hooks to, to mount this whichever way you need. But for today's video, it's gonna be the typical straight up horseshoe pointing towards the sky. Now I want to show you real quick how to make the 
hooks on the rubber cord here. They give you enough cord to make a bunch of different hooks and it's a real stretchy cord. You're going to cut each piece about 50% of the length you actually need it so it will stretch and be really tight. Let me show you how easy this is. You get plenty of hooks. You have extra straps for later, all kinds of extra bits so you're not left with not enough pieces. And here are the sleeves that will actually close the hook onto the rubber cord. Let me grab a few of those real quick. All right, hook looks like this, okay? And here's the rubber sleeve. All you do, it's super simple. Now on the hook, there's two little squeezy sort of things. That's the best way I can describe it, that, that you could squeeze with your fingers in and out. And that's gonna actually squeeze onto the rubber cord. And this is the sleeve that will push those squeezy bits into the cord. <laughs> squeezy bits is a very technical term, by the way, all right? All right, so now take the rubber cord, push it up into the hook and get it all the way to the very end, okay? You'll feel it stop. And then push the sleeve onto those things. You can use your fingers to squeeze them in as well. And you just gotta squeeze hard and push until it goes all the way to the end. And then it sort of snaps and there you go. You have your first hook. All right, now let's get the drum back up here. Let me show you how you make the cords the correct length. So, your mount's gonna be right about here, okay? The cords are gonna be the longest going from the top of the mount to these lugs up here on the top of the drum and they're gonna be their shortest at the bottom. Again, you're gonna want it about 50% of the length so you can stretch the rubber cord and really make it tight. That way the horseshoe will not move at all. So what I suggest you do is connect it to one of your rubber anchors. You may have to loosen the screw a little bit just to give you some room to turn the rubber hook if you need to. About something like that, okay? And really now you're just sort of eyeballing it. You're gonna want it right about there. Pull it up, maybe you're gonna have a hook on the other end. The hook is gonna go through the holes in the horseshoe right here. So if you need about that long to get to the hole, you really only need about this much cord. So cut it right there, attach a hook on this end, and you're good to go. All right, now I'm gonna make the hook on the other side of this piece. Same thing, put your sleeve over first, push the, the rubber cord all the way to the very end, squeeze it with your fingers if you have to, and then just push it on there. Fine, if you twist it a little bit, that makes, that makes it a little bit easier too. There you go. Now you have your hook ready to go. You just yank it and it's not coming off, all right? So now I suggest you make the other one the exact same size and then just measure the other ones and you're good to go. So now I have these two lugs here, we're gonna be short. Then I went up one more, so that'll be a little bit longer and then it'll be really long for the one going all the way to the top. Exciting stuff, exciting stuff. Okay, there you have it. You saw me cutting and making the hooks with the different length cord. There's three spots on each side that the horseshoe is attached, but they give you a lot of extra cord, a lot of extra hooks, and even more leather straps. So if you need it to be tighter, or even more sturdy, if you have a heavier microphone, like the Beta 52 from Shure, it's a heavy microphone, so you might need an extra one, okay? If you do uh, install it where it's laying flat or at an angle, you might need a couple extra hooks and pieces of the cord to use, but for now, you'll notice that the horseshoe, it moves a little bit, right? This is a shock mount. One of the benefits you're gonna get out of having your microphone installed in the kick drum with the Kelly shoe mount is you're gonna have a, you know, sometimes when you're on a, like a loud stage that's creaky, it's old, you're in an old club like that, you have, say, a cheap boom that the microphone is, connects, that, that is connected to that the club owns. You hit your kick drum, it takes the sound, the sound kind of goes, runs through the uh, microphone stand into the stage and goes away. And by the time it gets to the PA and to the console and out the PA, I should say, it loses some of that low end, some of that fundamental. 
with the microphone attached to the Kelly shoe system here, you know, and it's on its shock mount, all of that resonance of the drum is not taken away by the stage, by the, the uh, boom stand that the microphone is connected to. It's just laying, it's installed in there, floating on its own. And it's a good thing for the sound of your kick drum, along with the convenience of having the microphone in the same place every time you set your kick drum up. All that being said, let me show you how the, kick, the microphone mounts onto the shoe here. We'll start with the uh, mic clip. Just tighten it on. Now I have it, every microphone's different, right? If you have it directly straight on to the piece right here, you might not be able to fit the XLR cable into the bottom of the mic. That's why they make it so you can mount it at different angles, flat at an angle, that's like I said. But you can also adjust the mic clip to be tight, but not right down the center. So I take the D112 like this, turning the clip a little bit, and there you go. Place it wherever you want. This is a good spot, I think. The mic cable will fit under here nicely. And then what you do is when you put your front head back on, you can probably have a hole in it. You just run the mic cable through the hole. If for some reason you like to play your kick drum without a hole in the front head, one thing you're going to have to do is make a cable that runs through the air vent of your kick drum hole. It's not hard to do. You might need to learn how to solder just three solder points inside a microphone cable, or you can have someone at, at uh, Sweetwater make you a cable that does that. Very easy to do either way you do it. All right, now I'm going to move this drum off to the side, grab the other drum and show you how to install the Kelly shoe flats. All right, we're going to install the flats now. Let me show you what's inside the package. This one is actually easier to do than the horseshoe version. This is what you get in the package. This is what holds the microphone. We're going to install it with using a Shure Beta 91A, a very common kick drum microphone that's great for the inside. You couple this with a kick drum microphone on the outside and you have a great kick drum sound. But all it does is it slides right on to this base like that. Okay? So it's going to stay there and never move. Let me take it back off before I install it. We'll just put the microphone off to the side. You get some leather straps like you did in the other system. And now the rubber cord are like this. Okay, you don't have to cut this. These will just stretch from the base to the lugs on the kick drum. So let's install it now. All right, grab your screwdriver. You only need to take four lugs off. And again, make sure that you do this with the kick drum spurs pointing away from you, okay? Remember that the microphone has to be pointing towards the batter side, just so you don't get confused, okay? The resonant side is the side that the spurs are pointing out. You're a drummer, you probably already know this, but I just want to point it out just to be safe. So let's take off these four lugs and get started. There you go. Now, grab your leather straps. Again, they give you more than you need in the package here. And the way this works is, instead of attaching your leather strap to the hooks like you did in the other system, you just wrap them around the rings here and then reconnect your lug. Again, the lug screws go right through the hole in the leather strap. Make it a little bit easier on myself. Can you see this okay? You will have one extra ring and one extra strap left over. That's a good thing, just in case you need it. Also inside, I want to show you these. You get these two little white plastic clips. Now this goes on to this base back here. <laughs> Found it. And really it's just there to hold the microphone in place 
after you install the microphone. Right now, I'm not going to put them on, and they do come out. You just squeeze these things and push up. But that is just a protective feature to hold the microphone. You know, when you take, um, when you take your kick drum out of the club and you put it in the bag, your kick drum doesn't stay standing up like this. You lay it flat. So this way, the microphone will stay on its holder and not come off. That's what these little protectors are for. Okay. So, here's the microphone, Beta 91A. The XLR side should be pointing at the resonant side of the head, away from the beater. The main, the main microphone points towards where the beater's going to hit the head, okay? So it goes in like this. I would suggest uh, putting the base on before you attach the microphone, just to make it easier on yourself. And really all you do is connect these hook rings. Now you're going to have to hold the kick drum in place and pull. These are supposed to be tight, so you have to use a little bit of elbow grease, a little bit of strength to get it on there. But once you do, it's, it's on until you disconnect it. So here's the last one. Pull from the other side. Okay, almost got it here. There we go. Simple as that. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. Let's get the microphone on there. There you go. Now these plastic pieces I, was, I showed you just a second ago would go in the two little holes right here in the back. Okay? And that would hold, you put both of them in and then that would hold the microphone in place when you lift your kick drum and like lay it flat when you put it in your case. For now, I'm just going to put them off to the side. That's it ladies and gentlemen. Really simple, very easy and don't worry that it's bouncing up and down like this. You're not going to, it's not going to mess with your sound of your kick drum at all. Again, it's a shock mount. It should have a little bit of give to it like this. Very cool system. Now this is a great system for when you do want to have both heads on your kick drum without a hole. You don't want to have a hole in the resonant head. So this is a great way to do it because the Beta, one, Beta 91, like I said, along with co and in combination with a re another microphone out front like the Beta 52 is a great combination kick drum sound for live or the studio. There you have it everybody, the Kelly Shoe kick drum microphone shock mount systems. A really convenient way to make your life a little bit easier as a drummer. A great way to have your microphones in the same place no matter where you take your kick drum in and out of clubs, in and out of church, in and out of the studio, in and out of your house. It will always be there in the same place to give you a consistent kick drum sound every time. If you want any more information about these Kelly Shoe products, just contact your Sweetwater sales engineer. Thanks a lot for watching.